Good morning, modern steaders. You know what we haven't done yet that we need to? We haven't let the pigs out into the big pasture. Let's go do that. Good morning. You wanna come out to the big pasture? You haven't been out here yet. Look at all that hay I gave you. Go ahead, girls. They don't know what to think. The gate's open. You gonna come out? <gasps> they crossed the line. They're free. They're loving it already. Now we just gotta hope that they don't go near the fence, and if they do, if they do hit the fence, they know to stay on this side of it, and they don't go that away. They're going to the fence. When I was feeding the pigs first thing this morning, Gina asked me if I wanted the bucket with all of our food scraps. I said, no, the pigs are going out on pasture. And if I need to get them back in for some reason, at least we'll have some good food scraps. What? What do you think? Look at all the free room. Let's see what happens when I leave. Hopefully they don't follow me to the fence. We got these pigs, they were a little older. They had electric fence where they were, but they didn't know which side to stay on. We've been training them for two to three weeks in their pen to electric fence, so I'm hoping they know when they hit the fence, go backwards. We'll find out. You need to stay in the pasture. Yeah. They found some apples. Oh, is that a good apple there, Copa? Today's the perfect day to let the pigs out on pasture because I'm going to be home anyways. We have some friends coming over for dinner later tonight and I want to smoke up some of the sweet Italian sausage in the smoker to have that to go along with. We're going to be cooking a small roast up and a couple of pork chops. We'll have some sweet Italian, some smoked sweet Italian sausage. That's going to be good. So I'm going to get the fire going and then we'll get some apple wood going and we'll put the sausage in the smoker. This fire we want to get warm too. We're gonna to be cooking the sausage, not just we'll be smoking and cooking the sausage at the same time. So we're not doing a cold smoke like we did with the bacon. So far the pigs are still in the pasture. So now that we have all this beautiful food, we got all the pork, we got the bacon, we got the sausage, we got hams, we got copas curing in the refrigerator, we got prosciutto curing in the refrigerator. I've been in a lot of conversations with people all over the place, hearing different things and different theories. I don't know if it's because I'm more attuned to it right now that I'm hearing it, or if it's because we're talking more about all this great food we have and we're raising and cooking. But the general conception is, is better eat that in moderation, you're going to kill yourself. Or, oh, I wonder what their blood pressure is or what your blood pressure is going to be. People think of bacon and fat as evil. It's gonna kill you. And it gets me thinking and it kind of gets me wound up. But So animals, if they're raised on their natural diet, they thrive. They don't need any medication. They don't need any vet visits. Think about all the animals in the wilderness. You don't see sick coughing deers running around or you don't see that in nature. They're eating the diet that was intended for them and the diet that they're eating 
was grown the way it's supposed to be grown because they're out in nature and they're eating grass they're eating berries and it's it's as organic as you can get nowadays so that's what they're eating and they're healthy if you eat grass-fed animals pasture raised you get chickens that are raised on pastures pigs that are raised on pasture or out in wood forest eating their natural diet they don't get sick homesteaders if we and farmers, if we raise our animals correctly, you don't have to give them medication. They're 99.9% .9 of the times, they're healthy. Every once in a while, you might have a rare occasion where an animal gets sick or they're born unhealthy, but it happens very seldom. Confinement farming, you got to feed them the right grains with the right minerals in it and you don't want them to get sick the vets there all the time and they're having animals dying on them all the time it's crazy so if an animal is fed the right diet they thrive so how can we don't think as humans if we eat the correct diet we would thrive we think of animal fats and meats bad for you i do understand that the meats and the fats that we eat from confinement farmed animals are bad for us but if we eat animals that are raised the way they were intended to be raised they're healthy for us this is and I don't have all the answers here but this is the one way I look at it we all have different beliefs so somebody or something created where we live you have your beliefs I have my beliefs I believe in a creator he created this wonderful place the, he created it so the animals can thrive on it with the natural diets why wouldn't the creator of the earth make an earth that we could thrive in? We've, how many years have we been here for? We've been here for thousands of years. And how long has Western medicine been here for? Not that long. And we, have a, we as a generation have always lived. Yes, there's always been death. People got sick. I understand that we have a lot more modern conveniences than they did. They didn't have wood stoves. They didn't have nice houses like we had. So that right there, let alone the medical advances, is going to be a lot for somebody to, to live and thrive. But we always lived and thrived. And we looked at as food. We didn't look at it as medicine because we didn't need it. But food was our medicine. Pigs are being crazy. If somebody got sick, they knew what herb they needed or what spice they needed. They knew to make chicken broth or bone broth that's healthy for you. When did we go away or stop thinking that our food is our medicine or our food can heal us or sustain us? Like if we eat the right diet, we're going to have less doctor visits. I don't know about you, but I have a busy life. I like a busy life. And trying to go to the doctors is a pain in the butt. So whether you don't want to do it for health, at least you don't got to go to the doctors all the time and you save a lot of time. So why would the creator, however this planet was made, why would whoever made this planet put us on a planet that we that didn't already have everything we need to survive? That'd be a pretty cruel person or thing or whatever your belief is. But why would we be here and being a place that doesn't already have what we need? We don't need hydrogenated oils. We don't need to have confinement farmed animals. We need to eat a natural diet, as natural as we can get, to sustain our body. I'm going to eat fat. I'm going to eat butter, I'm going to eat oils, but they're all going to be from healthy animals grown the way they were intended to be grown. If we look back, Western A. Price did some great research and study on this. If you guys don't know who Western A. Price is, go on the old interwebs and research him. He was a dentist who went around to different parts of the world that our diet hadn't affected yet. They were still eating their natural diets wherever they were. And a lot of natural diets for the longest time in different areas were wherever they could get their hands on. If you lived by the ocean, it was fish. If you lived in grassland, you raised cows and you ate a lot of cows. You ate red meat. I mean, you ate whatever was easy for you to get your hands on. Like nowadays, it's easy for us to get our hands on junk food, so we eat it. But they used to eat these ways. In their health, they didn't have heart attacks. They didn't have cancer there was all that stuff was unheard of when they were eating natural their natural way for their area it didn't matter what the diet consisted of as long as it was a natural diet for their area 
they thrived. As soon as we introduced our Western style sugary candy junk food diet, that's when all the diseases became inherent. So I just don't understand why we've gone away from that or what it's gonna take to get us back the right direction. We're trying to do it and we're having fun doing it. We enjoy doing it. We don't get to do it all completely the way we want to do it. It's like a progression there. If I've lost you on that conversation, I'm sorry. I just think it's a neat conversation, something neat to think about. We've been here for a long time, eating a certain diet, and we've thrived. Why are we all of a sudden going away from them? I'd love to hear your thoughts. Good, bad, tell me I'm crazy. Leave it in the comments down below. It's just something I think about a lot. I ponder it. I don't have the answers, but I know, like, bacon, I know to make bacon, you take the belly of a pig, some salt, some sugar, maple syrup, and some applewood smoke, and it makes a delicious food. That doesn't happen by chance. So why wouldn't this food be good for us? They, whoever designed this place, didn't design it for that beautiful food to kill us. All right, I'll stop my rant there. Let's get back to getting the fire going and we'll smoke some sausage. I hope the pigs stay in the pasture. They're running around and acting crazy. It's smoking nicely. We're up to a hundred degrees just over so while that's finishing warming up let's go get the sausage ready you probably want to see the inside of the outdoor kitchen I'm not ready to show you in there yet I want to finish cleaning it up and then we'll do a proper tour of the outdoor kitchen now that it's all done all oh, that roast smells delicious you're getting fogged up Brought you inside. Let's check on the roast, ready? Oh, that shoulder roast looks delicious. I wish you could smell it. It's so much fun being able to have friends and family over and cooking up small portions of everything. Might even fry up some bacon so we can try some bacon. I'll get a few, I'll get a few sausages smoking. Let me get them out of the fridge. Grab the sausage. This is gonna be fun for me too, cause you know what? I haven't tried the sausage smoked yet. This is gonna be interesting to see. How can we tie these up hmm. to smoke them? It might not look pretty, but it's gonna work. I should have kept them linked. That's all right. They're linked, they're just linked differently now. <laughs> I was just asked today, is there anything you can't do and not mess up on? I said I mess up all the time. Perfect example, those sausage. I cut the links when I shouldn't have. But what I told them, but what I told them was, is I mess up all the time. I love messing up. I learn from my mistakes. And she goes, oh, you just don't show them on camera. I said, no, I do. But we just turn them into something else. Yeah, I messed up. I shouldn't have cut them. But we made it work. It's still gonna be delicious. It might just be unconventional, but I'm just an unconventional kind of guy, I guess. It's still gonna taste delicious. So let's go get these funky hong sausage out in our smoker. Oh yeah, let's go. It's not quite up to temperature yet, but you know what? It's nice and smoky in there. Oh yes. That's perfect. So all the smoker, oops, warms up. Let's hang the sausage. I'm gonna cook them low and slow anyways, so this will be perfect. Perfect. Fire's roaring, I can hear it. Oh yeah, that temperature will get up there fast. I'll get that going. 
Let's go check on the pigs while that sausage smokes. Make sure they're still in the pasture. Ooh, hello girls. Yep, stay back from that fence. That's smart of you. Don't touch the fence. I don't want to hear you squeal. Not only are they staying in the pasture, they're recognizing us as food and they're coming over to see us. Woohoo! I need you to braid this bread because I can't braid. Okay. If I braided, I don't know what it would end up looking like. So we're going to braid these three together. Just trying to figure out the best way to start it. Probably attaching it. Okay, I'll hold this in while you start. I've never braided bread before, have you? No, it seems harder. Because this will be shown. That's okay. Because normal braids don't do that. The braided basil, rosemary, and garlic bread. Doesn't that sound delicious? Yeah. Do you want to so then it says tuck the ends under. So either roll them or tuck them so they just look. There you go. Perfect. We'll just do this. And now we're going to cover it with a towel and let it rise for 15 minutes. That looks pretty. You did a good job. All right, let's do this. 15 minutes. Awesome. Thanks for helping. Okay, we'll be ready to check the bread. Uh -huh. the timer just went off. Let's see how pretty it is. Watch your head. Oh, it's so pretty. I did a good job, didn't I? <laughs> uh, a few more minutes. You ready to see the beautiful bread you made? Oh, pretty. Mm-mm-mm. I -mm -mm. bet you it's going to taste just as good as it looks. Mm -hmm. The pig stayed in the pasture, which is awesome. I got him back in the pen for the night. Now, we need to go check on the sausage, pull it out of the smoker, and put it on the grill. Oh, let's see how delicious this looks. Mmm, mmm, mmm. Delicious. Oh, look at that. We got the wood cook stove going. It's nice and warm in here. Oh, these sausage look delicious. Look at that. Oh, beautiful. Cook them on the grill and just heat them through thoroughly. Mmm, mmm, mmm. Isn't that going to be delicious? Yep. Let's get them on the grill. A little bit of uh, seasoning on there. Let them stare for a few minutes and we'll flip them. Oh, look at that. Delicious. Our friends are on their way over, so I'm gonna get the sausage on the grill. Oh, this is gonna be a delicious dinner. I'm gonna end the video here. If I remember, I'm gonna take a picture of the mayo. It's gonna be so good. We got the roast. We got a pork roast done. We got the bread, we got a couple of pork chops, a few smoked sausages, Brussels sprouts, potatoes. They're bringing over a dessert. This is going to be good. I'll take a picture. If, I, if, it's, if it's not in the video, I'm sorry, I forgot. The food was just too good. Hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. I had a blast talking with you today, smoking the sausage and making some wonderful bread with Olivia. And now we get to go enjoy it. We'll see you right back here tomorrow at Lumna Acres, a guide to modern homesteading, self-sufficiency, and freedom.